Hey students, welcome back for the second video of our three-part series of working with the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse. In the first video of our series, we covered the process of installing the toolkit and setting up a default profile in Eclipse. In this video, we will be examining the AWS Toolkit Overview window and the AWS Explorer view. If you watch this video in its entirety, you will be able to move the AWS Explorer view to different locations in Eclipse, show and hide the AWS Explorer view, display the AWS Toolkit Overview window, rename, add, and remove AWS accounts, change the default account, and change the default region. Understanding this content will be particularly important for you to navigate the AWS Toolkit features. So let's do this. We ended the first video of our series by supplying an access key ID and secret access key to create our default profile in Eclipse. With this account created, we noticed the AWS Explorer view at the bottom of our screen. Picking up where we left off in the last video, we see the AWS Explorer view at the bottom of the screen. You'll notice the view displays several of the most popular AWS services that we can interact with directly through the Eclipse program. Here you can see in no particular order, Amazon EC2, Amazon DynamoDB, AWS Elastic Beanstalk, and Amazon S3. I prefer working with this window on the left-hand side of my screen. I'm going to move the window to the left by clicking the tab and dragging the view onto the Package Explorer tab. With the mouse on the tab, I'll release the mouse and you'll notice the view moves from the bottom of the screen to the left side. By releasing the mouse on the tab, the AWS Explorer window shares the same real estate in the IDE as the Package Explorer tab. We can see by clicking each of the tabs, the views appear in the same area of our IDE. Before we dive into the AWS services available in the AWS Explorer, I wanted to identify some useful buttons. First, you'll notice on the toolbar, there's a button that looks like an orange cube. This button is called the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse button. If I click on the button, you'll notice the AWS Toolkit Overview window appears to the right. This window provides us with access to various functionality. For example, we can perform tasks like create a new AWS Java project and launch Amazon EC2 instances. If we click the Create New AWS Java Project, we can fill in the details about our project, like the name and the type of sample project we wish to create. Be advised that some of the functionality like creating a project with Amazon S3 works with Java version 8. If you try to run this code with more recent versions of Java, the code will not run because the APIs used are not supported. I'll click Cancel here because Eclipse on my machine is configured to use Java version 17. I'll demonstrate how to use the S3 sample code using Java version 8 in a future video. Back to our AWS Toolkit Overview window, you'll notice that in addition to the tasks found in each section, I also have an additional resources heading that allows us to view videos or visit relevant pages on the AWS website. The window also provides access to several developer blogs on the right. Next, we'll move our attention to the AWS Explorer tab. The first thing everyone should know about working with this tab is how to display the view in case you close it. First, I'll close it. 
Then to open it, I'll mouse over the drop down arrow beside the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse button. I can click the drop down and choose Show AWS Explorer View to show the view again. We see that it appears in the same location where we saw it previously. Some of the buttons available in this view include the three dots, which are commonly referred to as the kebab menu. We can click this button to access a menu. If you remember the default account that we created in the first video of our series, we can hover the menu AWS account and see that the default account is the currently selected account. I can click on Configure AWS Accounts to open the AWS Toolkit Preferences. If I want to change the name of the default account so I can remember the permissions assigned to this profile, I can supply a new name in the Profile Name box. I can click Apply and Close to modify the name and close the window. Notice that another window opens indicating that the AWS credentials file has changed. I'll click Yes to reload the credentials and with the new credentials loaded, the default profile box reflects the new name. If I want to add another profile that has different permissions, like a database administrator, for example, I would create the profile in the AWS IAM Management Console, just like we did with the initial account. If I switch to my browser window right now, you'll notice that I've created a user account called Eclipse DynamoDB Admin. I've added this account to a group account that has full access to the DynamoDB service. When the account is created, you'll notice that an access key and secret access key has been generated. If I return to Eclipse, I can go back to the AWS Toolkit Preferences. I click the Kebab menu, AWS Accounts, and configure AWS Accounts to open this window. Here I want to add a profile to store the information for the database administrator account that I just created. I'll click Add Profile. I'll type DB Admin in the Profile Name text box. Next I'll switch back to my browser and copy the access key ID. I'll return to Eclipse and paste this information into the Access Key ID text box. I'll do the same for the Secret Access Key. I'll click Apply and Close. Again, I'll click Yes to reload the credentials. And with the new credentials loaded, you can see my menu now displays the renamed account and the new account that I just created. If I want the S3 full account to be the default account, I could simply select it, and you'll notice that it is now the account that is the default. The default account is displayed with a check mark beside it. If I no longer have a need for the DB Admin account, I can remove it from Eclipse. I would do this by clicking Configure AWS Accounts. I would make sure to select the account in the default profile box. Then I would click the Remove Profile button. I'll click Apply and Close. I'll reload the credentials file, and you'll notice now the only account that is listed under AWS Accounts is the S3 full access account. 
As we mentioned before, as a security measure, I would want to remove the DB account or recycle the access key and secret access key since I've displayed it in this video. Moving away from the kebab menu, I next wanted to talk about the region dropdown, which allows us to select a region that we can work from. You can find the region dropdown, in this case next to the American flag. Selecting the correct region is very important because some Amazon services are located in the region in which you create them. For example, S3 buckets and the objects inside of those buckets reside within an AWS region. To view our bucket and the objects within them, we'll need to have the appropriate region selected. I can select an AWS region by simply choosing the region that I want to view. For example, if I want to work in the US West, Northern California region, I can select this region from the dropdown. It's not really easy to see which region you currently have selected, but if you look closely when you click the drop down arrow, you'll notice that the selected region has a blue background behind the flag. You'll notice that all of the flags in the drop down list have a gray background. Only the US West, Northern California region has a blue background. If I want to change the region back to the US East, Northern Virginia, I simply select the region, and you'll notice in the drop down list, the US East Northern Virginia region is now currently selected and it has the blue background. I'm going to wrap up the video now, but we'll cover working with regions, and in particular, working with regions using the S3 service through Eclipse in the next video. After watching this video, you now have a better understanding of the features available in Eclipse after installing the AWS Toolkit. We covered moving, hiding, and showing the AWS Explorer view. We displayed the AWS Toolkit Overview window. We renamed, added, and removed profiles. And we changed the default account and the default region. With a better understanding of the AWS Explorer view, we are now ready to start interacting with AWS services through Eclipse. I'll see you in the next video.